that we've taken a look at the history of acting, let's take a look at how actors use Stanislavski's method of acting to create a role today. Remember, the method approach to acting attempts to create a complete character on the stage by preparing the inner and outer life of the character. The method approach begins with a couple of simple principles that take an actor a lifetime to perfect. Stanislavski's method of physical actions places its emphasis on the completion of an action. In his book, An Actor Prepares, Stanislavski tells a fictional story of a young acting student at the Moscow Art Theater who is studying acting, but once he is on stage, he has difficulty behaving in a natural way. The black hole of the proscenium arch and the seats of the house intimidate him to the point where he feels his acting becomes over-exaggerated and false. Suddenly, as he tries once again to render a natural performance of the role he is working on, a stage carpenter drops a box of nails backstage and startles the young actor. He goes to the stage carpenter and helps him pick up the nails so that he can get back to his rehearsal in peace. After he has finished his task, he returns to the stage and once again feels awkward and artificial. And then it occurs to him, while he was helping the stage carpenter pick up the nails that were dropped, he had no problem behaving in a natural way. It was evident to the young acting student at this point that the key to truth in acting rested with his experience with the stage carpenter. What was the difference between the part he was rehearsing on stage and the experience that he had backstage? This story, which occurs at the beginning of Stanislavski's revolutionary book on the art of acting, An Actor Prepares, holds the key to his approach to truthful acting. When on the stage... The young actor was concentrating on his performance. As a result, he couldn't help but to perform in an artificial manner. While he was backstage helping the stage carpenter, he was concentrating on his action. And as we know, the main art object of theater is dramatic action. By concentrating on his action, the young acting student came to the realization as to what was the basis of truthful acting action. But as we've already learned, there's a difference between action in life and action on the stage, what Aristotle referred to as an imitation of action. After this experience, Stanislavski's young acting student engages in a search for how to construct action on stage that is similar to action in real life. This is how Stanislavski laid out the structure for truthful acting. First, he said that it was important for an actor to understand what he referred to as the given circumstances of a play. The actor has to understand the details of the character's situation and be able to believe that he is in the character's situation. The main technique that he taught his students to use in order to do this has been referred to as the magic if. The magic if suggests that the actor imagine what he would do in the set of circumstances that his character was in. But what if you would behave differently in your character's situation than your character does in the script? In this case, you would adjust the magic if and ask yourself, what kind of situation would be similar for you? And then you would say, my character's situation would be as if, and you would place the other situation in its place. Let's see how this would work. Let's say your character was in a situation where they killed someone who was an obstacle to them. As an actor, you may say, I would never result to killing another human being just because they were an obstacle to me. You would have to adjust your magic if. Rather than killing a human being, you could think about how a fly was pestering you while you were trying to work on your homework. Think about the satisfaction you would feel if you swatted and killed that fly. Now adjust that feeling to your character situation. In this scene, you would kill your nemesis with the same zeal that you would have swatted that fly. Once the actor has a clear and specific notion of what his character's given circumstances are and has adjusted to the intensity of that circumstance, then they need to identify and intensify their action. The actor does this, according to Stanislavski, 
by understanding the basic desire that drives the action. This has been translated from the Russian as a character's objective. Other terms that have been used to identify this dynamic are task or intention. The key to identifying the action is to come up with a playable, purposeful action. Let's take a look at Stanislavski's young acting student. When the stage carpenter dropped the box of nails, the young acting student wanted to get them cleared up and get the stage carpenter out of the way so he could continue rehearsing. His actions had a strong purpose. He unselfconsciously went about his action to achieve his goal. So a simple way of stating the method approach to acting is that an actor pursues a playable, purposeful action within an imaginary set of circumstances. Naturally, there are many more levels and techniques to be used in the method approach, but this is what is at the core. By understanding the purpose of the action and then pursuing the action, the actor lives the inner and outer life of the character. Let's take another look at the prologue of Sophocles' tragedy, Antigone. Antigone's sister, Ismene, enters. What is her given circumstance? She has been told by her sister to meet her at this place in secret. The city has just been torn apart by war, and Ismene has lost both her brothers. She is also anxious about what her hot-headed sister, Antigone, wants to talk to her about. Her action is to wait to find out what her sister has to tell her. Since the action is Ismene waiting for Antigone, there is not a lot of outer action or activity. Most of the action is internal, as we can see from the scene. When Antigone enters, her action is to tell Ismene about her plan. Ismene? This involves considerable outer action, but Antigone's anxiety about how Ismene will react is all a part of the action as well. Let's take a look at some of this scene from Antigone and see how each actress has worked out the given circumstances in order to create the, both the inner and outer life of the character. And let's see how, even though they use elevated language, they work to create an authentic stage performance. Can you feel it? The draw of destiny, heaping cruel pain upon we two sisters for being born of ill-begotten Oedipus. What's hero to the city now denied? Have you caught wind of the proclamation? Soon made public by our uncle Crayon, now king by virtue of the fall, alas, of our two brave brothers, Oedipus' sons. I've heard of no proclamations, nor is there fresh news good nor bad, Antigone, since the enemies who attacked dear Thebes left our homeland without a victory. I thought not. Thus I called you to this place, secret and still, to reveal it all to you. Tell me, I sense some tragic mystery. It's no mystery that Crayon regales with honor one brother for bravery in battle and dooms the other to shame. Eteocles, fatally wounded on Ares' bloody field by his brother's sword, will receive full honors. Polynices, not surviving the blow Eteocles landed upon him with his final breath, is to receive no burial at all. His body laid bare to the elements, unable to defend himself. He will become a feast for the greedy vultures, unwept with no one to grieve. Antigone! Unsepulchred! No one to pray for his lost soul. What are the given circumstances? What is the playable, purposeful action that the characters are pursuing? Seemingly simple but an actor spends their entire life trying to make this simple equation work. Well, that's all for the art of acting. Time to complete your task for this section. We'll see you in the next unit.